<laughs> no. That's good. Always. What's guys, good is that the hangover hasn't set in yet. Hey. So. <laughs> sure, why not? Sure. Hi. Oh, I'm sitting on my tail. Oh. You just sit on the floor. I'm just thankful I wore pants. <laughs> For once. And I didn't. <laughs> first. Uh, we would go through and, and usually it was when the scene was complete, 
I would say, all right, let's watch the scene back. And what's your feedback? Do you like, do you want to change anything? I'd like to change this, blah, blah, blah. It, it doesn't happen. It's very rare um, that that's the case, uh, unless it's original animation and, and the company is putting a lot of money behind uh, and tweaking and everything else. But for anime, that never happens. The shows I do now, Naruto, uh, a lot of the time it's just record whatever actor's there and sometimes we'll have time to look over it, but mostly it's just send it off to the mix. I never see the episode before it goes to mix and it's it's out there. So it's, uh, at the time, it, it was really time and money. It was a huge, huge, huge benefit for that. So sometimes that's all you need for really good quality is just a little extra time. That's it, a couple extra days in the studio, it makes all the difference. Cool. Right here. We'll get to you. Um, two questions. Now, before I ask this first one, Mary, I don't know if you've ever gotten to work with um, Andrea Romano. Steve's working. Okay, but this, okay, this first one's for Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Do you recall your time when you actually got to work with Andrea Romano for like a few projects? Yes. Uh, Andrea is amazing, actually. She's uh, one of my favorite directors in the world. She trained so many of the great directors from the Hanna Barbera. Days and Warner Brothers, and uh, she was kind of a bucket list director. Besides this one, um, sorry, she's pretending. Uh, no, she's 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 wonderful to work with. She's she's super smart and high speed. Knows exactly what she wants, and and I love that in the director. That the the worst thing that can happen in a studio is if you're working with the director who has no idea what they want for the project, and she holds this vision. Like Mary does, that's a sign of a great director where they, they know the story arc, they know where things are going, they hold the entire vision because when we go in, we know our little piece of it, and that's it. And so when you go in with a director with that kind of vision, you just, bing, bang, boom, knows exactly what they want, it goes quickly, it goes beautifully. And working on something like Legend of Korra with her was uh, achievement unlocked, and it was, a, it was an amazing thing, an amazing thing. And it took me 10 years, I think, of, uh, submitting auditions before I finally got in front of her to be able to truly audition for her. And uh, so it's, it, it was like a you know little fanboy dream. Yeah. Second one, um, now let's say I make a little black project that's low budget, or very low budget and no budget, and I decide to scout out for a specific person for this one. That's an actual working voice actor, say, Kira Buckland or Eric Bauta. Would it be possible for me to like, Get them on board for something long distance, like even though I don't have much time for them. And Anything's possible. Uh, just Bowser. be a question of reaching out. Yeah, Bowser does everything for free, so I would call him. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you his number. <laughs> don't, don't need the number, no. but I definitely will get him if I find something. Yeah, it's, it depends on the project. It depends on the actor and how busy we are. Yeah. If that. it's just like, if it's just a little one And if you short. approach them in a professional manner is the thing. Because yeah. there are no, a lot of... Chris Neosi says that in his curb line. Yeah. Having a professional attitude is key to yes. approach somebody who is a professional. Yeah, because I've, I've helped out a lot of projects, people that have just contacted me on Facebook, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, okay. That's how I got actually involved in the, there's a new game, Colopt, that came out, and I sang the song for that, and I was contacted through Facebook, actually, and I said, well, here's my agent, and all of a sudden it became a professional situation, as opposed to, I've got a song, I want you to sing it, you know? <laughs> so, uh, if, you, if you approach someone in a professional way and contact their agent and everything else, and, and uh, I think that there's always a possibility, there, you never know. And there is Skype for working with them long distance if you don't live in yeah, the same Skype. area. Yeah, Skype, of course. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the other thing I would add to that is just make sure your project is ready for that, mm -hmm. because there have been many times where people have approached me and they said, well, I've got this thing, and they send stuff to me, and it's, it's like, half done, the characters aren't really developed. Well, mostly the script's got to be done first before you can ask them. Absolutely, yeah. 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 Okay. you got to go to the guy in the back. All the way in the back, yes. Uh, this question's for Steve. Yes. In that case, we'll go with the guy next to you. Better look next year, then. Oh. 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 No. <laughs> That's my woman! <laughs> Some time ago, where you were you were saying 
I have a new role for Transformers, and it's like nothing you ever heard before. Yeah. You kind of keep getting the Star Trek reports, and everyone lost their mind. Yeah. So what was it like up until the end of that show? Putting on the mantle was fine. Putting on the heels hurt like hell. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of the most amazing projects I've ever worked on. Standing next to uh, Peter Cullen oh. and Frank Walker. Mm. Uh, my fanboy squee just went off. I <laughs> practically wet myself. Every time Peter's standing there, he says, roll loud. Everybody, <laughs> everybody in the room just goes, oh, 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 it's my turn to the mic. And we had to be professional. It was, it was amazing. With Darren Norris, who's one of my favorite people in the world, and I'm trying to deliver one of the very few uh, Starscream lines where it's heartfelt and you know he's actually sincere for a moment. Darren is standing next to me with two pieces of string cheese hanging out of his nose. <laughs> <whack. laughs> Kevin Michael Richardson, everybody in that room, it was it was amazing. We laughed so hard. We the shenanigans in that room were ridiculous. It's amazing we got anything recorded at all. <laughs> uh, and you know, it's Transformers. It, it was just the fact that it was Transformers was an incredible thing to begin with. Everything else is gravy. So yeah, I, I can't I can't even articulate it. All right, you and then we'll we'll start with Remmer. Okay, what was the most? How the volume did you fall? <laughs> Uh, I think the ones that are actually, in, in terms of, none are, are, are too hard emotionally to play because that's sort of our job uh, as actors when we are acting. It's like, that's usually the stuff that's the most fun is to play the most challenging roles in terms of if they're uh, a stretch, if you've really got to dig in emotionally and everything else, that's fun. I think the hardest roles to play are the ones that are difficult vocally that's the one to play, I'm right? To. So, uh, like Echidna in Devil May Cry 4, or, uh, thanks, Mom! <laughs> or, uh, 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 oh, the, the zombie queen that I did in uh, some Resident Evil game that was just, I, it took me a month to, re thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Umbrella Corp. Uh, that, uh, it took me a month to recover from that. And Liam O'Brien was directing, and I thought, well, I don't have any concerts coming up. I'm just mostly directing these days. So I'm going to blow it out and just see what I can do. So I did the D Baker, and let me see if I can play my face like a flute. <laughs> and, uh, and I blew it out for a month. It took a month to recover. But it was fun, and I made sounds I never thought I could make. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was referring to. Was that take a toll on your vocal cords? It does. You've got to be really careful. It's your instrument. It's like leaving a, 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 a cello out in the rain. It's just like you've got to be really, really careful. Because you blow it out, and you're done. You're done. You can't go buy a new cello. It's just like you've got to take care of your instruments. It's like if you're an athlete, you've got to take care of your body. You know? I mean, it's that's what we use. So. Yeah. For me, it's probably Wolverine, uh, and uh, the, the most stressful one that I can remember was working on Hulk Versus on the movie, and uh, just screaming my guts out. Just Wolverine, when he speaks like this, actually feels good on the throat. But when he's going like this in the Berserker Rage, and you're doing that for hours at a time, and I'm fighting with Fred Tatashore next to me, and we are literally swinging at the mic actually from that <laughs> session. I felt like the Hulk had been pummeling me all day. It was brutal. And, and uh, for those of you who do physical acting, it, it is, it's very much the same. And even if you're just in front of a microphone, especially when you're doing characters like that, it feels like your whole body has been through it. You're engaging every single muscle that you would if you were in that fight, psychologically and sometimes physically. And if you're just doing it psychologically, you can feel it. It manifests in the body. So not only does the throat go bad, my lungs hurt, my chest hurt, my, my body hurts after that. So sessions like that, it takes me several days to recover, sometimes a month to fully recover. And it breaks down the immune system too. So if you start doing that kind of work, make sure that you get lots of sleep, drink lots of water, all the things that you would do if you're coming down with you know, some sort of bug. So. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. Um, so question for both of you. Um, as actors, when you receive a role, you don't have a lot of information about the role. What do you ask in those five minutes when they're like, hey, here's a character, you're going to play in five minutes. You know, how do you approach that? I say, please tell me something about my character. <laughs> yeah. she, I rely on her so heavily for that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah we always do have to rely on your director. But sometimes you definitely go in and they're like, we don't know. Yeah. So you just have to, uh, it's a reckless abandon that you, you, you approach 
this job with and you just say, okay, I'm gonna let my ego and the monkey on my back that says I can't do it go for the moment and just play and see what happens. And if they don't like it, don't take it personally. It's just like, all right, well, let's try this, let's try this, let's try this, let's try this. So it's, it's a lot of just sort of trusting in yourself and, and not getting in your own way. And then you just kind of play. But I really rely on directors like more than anything else to give us an, you know, give an idea of, uh, Steve just did an episode of Pen Zero, and uh, he came in, and um, it's this crazy episode that uh, is actually anime based, um, that you're going to hate me for because it's sort of bad anime, but, because um, <laughs> we've all seen it, come on now, we've all seen it, um, and, it's a loving um, tribute, yes, it's a loving tribute, uh, but it was, we didn't know what we wanted when he came in, he played this one character that, just didn't know, you know, and, and Sam uh, Sam Levine was like, I don't know, what do you got? Let, let's throw something out and we'll discover it together. And at that point it becomes, what's really good about that is that it becomes this collective creative process, which is great, as long as uh, everybody on this side of the glass uh, is open to uh, playing and having fun, you know, which I think most of the time they are. They are, yeah, it depends though, but there are some projects where the character is already drawn, it's already fleshed out. We know an age, we know a, a body type, we know a dialect that they're looking mm -hmm. for, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So those are questions that, that I would ask if that is in place. Otherwise, I'll say, what does the character look like? And they don't know yet, they'll, they'll show me something like that. You know? <laughs> and, and they'll say, okay, go. And I'll say, how old? Uh, is it human? <laughs> so, I mean, just the, the normal questions that you need just to sort of encapsulate what what is this thing? Is it some amorphous blob that's that you're going to be bringing to life, or does it actually have some form that you had in your mind? And you know, for established characters like Starscream or Wolverine, the things that have been done before, we have a pretty good idea of what those characters are going to be, and then we can go from there. But certain things like this, where it's start from scratch, anybody's guess. Yeah. And sometimes the the we work completely against what the model type is for the character too. I just did a, a character for. Uh, film that was uh, very small. The character was maybe 12 inches tall, but it had a big freaking voice like this, you know? <laughs> so you never, you never know. You never know. And that was just something I threw out there and they went, oh, yeah, I like that. Go. <laughs> okay, you pick the next one. Next pick. Um, let's front row. Okay. okay. We'll get back. Um, so recently, Mary Elizabeth played Zara in Critical Gap. Yay! Yay! If you guys aren't watching Critical Role on Thursday nights, you've got to do it. It's the top voice actors playing D&D &D online. Now, some of you may say, D&D, &D, nerd. First of all, we're all nerds. If you're here, you're a nerd. <laughs> and they're improvising Lord of the Rings, basically, <laughs> or Evil Dead, or whatever. It's amazing improv, unbelievable storytelling. Matt Mercer is a genius DM. It's amazing. Uh, so check it out. Thursday night, Critical Role on Twitch, Geek, and Sundry. Anyway, what's your question? <laughs>